Hi, my name is Roland Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also Proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am excited to introduce to you an amazing singer and songwriter. His name, Lou. For more on Lou, you can read more about him right below this video. But in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the amazing songwriting of Lou. Yo. Man, a bad man from everywhere. Anyway. Man, we didn't go with him, but anyway. Indigent master, huh? Boy, this boy, the master, huh? Hey, run up a bag today. Pussy, man, I'm all gonna move away. Hey, oh, ain't no fast away, so me and the bro split 50 oh, way. Hey, hey, kick a violent hit like a titan. I'm risking my life for the fucking pay. I had to get in my bag today. You running me down no fucking way. Ha! No fucking way. You running me down, no, not today. I keep to myself, never needing no help. If you fucking with me, you might pass away. Better get out the fucking way. No homo, I got in the ass today. Hey. Shit, I can get ass today. You pussy ass nigga, we not the same. He say a drill, come blow my brain. Huh, lose my bro, not the same. Saw him drop, feel no pain. Not to me, not today. All I need is the blow on my lap, no Santa Claus. You switching the moods like man, a pause. Put up a tight, I ain't worried about not. I just get to the guap and run up a dollar. I got a dollar, then he got a dollar. We got some powder, we pushing the fighter. We got some powder, we pushing the fighter. Well, good morning, Lou. Good morning, how are you? I am good, my friend. We are both coming from. New York City, two different boroughs, but I love the fact that the audience has got a little sneak peek at one of your original tunes. But Lou, I wanna know, where were you born and when did you realize that you had such a great talent for songwriting? I was born in um, um, North, uh, uh, North, Northwest of Africa, like on the coast. I was born in Guinea, Kanakiri. Um, I didn't really get into songwriting. Well, I always liked music, but I didn't think I could do it till I got probably, well, you know, when you're a kid, you always say you could, you know, you always say you could do shit that you really can't do. So I was always telling people like, oh, I'm gonna be the world's greatest rapper. I'm gonna be the world's greatest da 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 before I even made a song or whatever. But I didn't really start getting serious by like 15, uh, probably 15, 14, that was like, oh, I probably could really do this. I was very bad, but um, I didn't start going to the studio. Um, that's when it started really like getting serious till I was 17. And then after 17, I'm 19 now. So I just spent two years on and off in the studio, just perfecting my craft. So I, I want to say like 18, I was like, oh, I could get really good at this. And I'm really, that's a long winded answer, but yeah, 18. Not long-winded at all, my friend. I mean, listen, when the audience gets to know more about you and goes to the links below this video, they're gonna see your immense <laughs> talent at a young yes. age. But Lou, I wanna know what brought you to the United States and when did you get here? I was here very, well, me and my, my mom um, went back and forth like a lot. So for the first couple of years of, uh, I wanna say till I was like three, we went back and forth from Guinea to America but my brother has um, sickle cell. And I don't know if you know, but um, that's a disease that fucks with um, your immune system and how you uh, take infections and um, diseases. And it's just like a long, lifelong thing. And uh, Africa, uh, it has a lot of counterfeit medicine. So sometimes you could buy something that's not like legitimate and then it could uh, mess with a uh, doubter's blood and it could clog, clog it up and it could call him to have a sickle cell crisis i don't know if you know what that is but it's when um when someone with that rare blood disease goes through this um you know their body goes through this whole like a uh, uh, shutdown thing through whatever little infection that happened so my mom was like uh it's safer for him if we just grew up over here it's good medicine good people that uh uh had a lot of benefits that would uh take care of him and also i had heart surgery so my mom was kind of concerned about that. So it was health reasons um, for my family to stay over here. But, but definitely education over here is a lot better over there. Yeah, sure. well, listen, Lou, I'm so grateful that you made it over to the States because now we all get to hear your amazing music. <laughs> I'm curious to know what inspires you, Lou, when writing a song? What inspires me? Um, it's my emotions, to be honest, bro, because uh, I could write I could write any type of song, usually if I'm very uh, grounded or whatever, but if I'm going through something, I like the beat to like match my mood, and sometimes it'll be like the most fire beat, and I'll have
have to save it for like months later because it's just not uh, what I'm feeling right now. So it's my experiences and my emotion depending on that week, to be honest. I love that, Lou. And what I also love, Lou, is that, you know, it's just a testament to the power of art, allowing us as artists to express ourselves. But not only that, Lou, you know, it's an, also a way for audiences who listen to your stuff to relate to emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was making, when I first started making music, I made, um, I was embarrassed about it like you do. And I was like making like aggressive and sad music. And I was like, oh, I don't want to release that. I showed my friends and my friends was like, nah, this is, this is real cool, bro. See, on top of that, Lou, not only real cool, but it's <laughs> real, you know, as, yeah. a direct, as a director, I'm always looking for the truth. And it's the truth, you know, it's the truth that people relate to. Yeah, yeah, it's real. That's why uh, I listen to everything. I listen to some classical rock, um, um, even J-pop. But, but rap has always been the realest form of art that expresses the most amount of pain for me. So that's why I kind of probably chose it. That's amazing. Well, Lou, do you have any songs uh, that you're working on now? Yeah. I'm sure you're I, always working on songs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not in the studio as much as I would like to be, but, um, you know, financial reasons. But I just uh, I just became an, uh, uh, well, I didn't, well, I am an electrician, and I just got this job uh, to work at this naval warship. So definitely going to be uh, working in a lot of different stuff. I have two love songs that I kind of want to get out because – I've heard a lot of my fans or people that I listen to me be like, I'm really good with like fast paced and, and, and aggressive and this type of music, but they want me to- uh, They want you to bring it down process. a little bit. They want yeah. you to bring it down. Yeah. So I wanna, yeah, I'm working on this love song that I think uh, people are gonna like. Well, listen, Lou, while you're at that job, do me a favor on behalf of all your fans, you know, cause you got a new fan of me. During this no, day you. job, you know, slow it down, write some love songs and just put it out there. Don't overthink it, my friend. You're extremely talented. Thank you. I got a question for you since you uh, uh, researched me. What, what did you uh, enjoy the most? What I enjoy most about you, Lou, is that you have an unapologetic singular voice, but it's funny that you mentioned that you listen to other genres of music because when I listen to your stuff, I don't just hear rap. I hear, I hear landscape, if that makes any sense. I hear like, there's like a musical landscape that mm. is like the heartbeat of your songs. Does that make sense? That's a, that makes sense. That's very beautiful way to describe it. <laughs> no, I mean, look at, I, I can feel with you, Lou, that you have a way of orchestra, and tell me if I'm wrong, this is just me sitting with your stuff. You have a way of somehow figuring out a musical beat, but also a musical texture and color to represent an emotion that may sometimes be hard to talk about. You literally yeah, use your music and lyrics as the language to express what is unexpressible. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Do you yeah. want me to keep going, Lou? I mean, listen, <laughs> if you want to turn this interview around, baby, I'm ready to talk <laughs> about you. You didn't nah, think I came here to play. Really I came here to play. <laughs> yeah. Listen, oh, my oh, friend. Oh, oh. Uh, go, go, song. go. Oh, you got a question? Yeah, I have another question. Go, go. My what, do you have more questions for me? <laughs> I will, will, but we're going to get to it. Go, let's go. Listen, Lou, I want to know, look at for all artists and all people, these past 16, 17 months have been tough, right? I mean, especially as a, us as artists on a financial front, but I'm curious to know what you're hopeful about looking forward, not only as artists, but as an artist, but also for, you know, the type of music you want to continue to put out there. Hmm. Hmm. Well, being inside, I'm not gonna lie. Um, 
I used to be able to do shows and I used to be able to make money off of that, but that like killed it. And that like caused me to like look into different areas. But in terms of a music, I probably just want to get back into like very, um, very lighthearted community party vibes. And when I mean community party, I mean like, you know, when like, like your whole block turn up and it's kind of like a family thing. You know what I'm saying? Like one of those songs. I want to have one of those songs at a party with just a bunch of Africans to just uh, uh, assemble under one roof, you know? That's probably- I hear you. So you're missing that sense of community and that sense of connecting, but also I'm sure for you also as a live performer, you miss that opportunity to feel in the moment, that instant gratification and that conversation that can only happen live between a performer and an audience. Right, that's a fact, yeah. It's, um, and you know, um, when it's uh, when it's definitely like your culture, like doing something that you're not doing, then you know people definitely put on and people definitely uh, respect it. Uh, when you're uh, fearless of that, when you got confidence in something, like, yeah, I'm doing this and I'm gonna keep doing this. You know. Well, then look at it. So I think that fearlessness, that unapologetic nature that you already have for such a young guy, that obviously you not only bring you know, your experience in the craft that you work on in the studio, especially more pre-pandemic than ever before. But I think I think it's also a beautiful thing that I am sure whether it's consciously or not, you're also bringing a lot of that emotion that you've had growing up. I mean, look at Lou. I don't know what it's like. To, I don't know what it's like to walk in your shoes, but I'm sure you've dealt with a lot of big emotion for maybe some things that most kids didn't see, you know, and feel. Yeah, that was also one of the things, like, um, I never wanted to, like, censor myself or censor, uh, like, oh, like, if I was embarrassed about this situation or something like that, because um, when I when someone does like my music, it's always connected to, because I know a lot of times I'll show people and they won't like it, and then they that one song that speaks to them specifically like everyone every time someone likes my music it's because it's like a close connection to what they've been going through or how they feel and i just said it in a very like concise way so um what you gonna call it um it is very important to me to be very truthful the truth is very important to me too so uh especially i got you know not just like older people when i first started doing it i was like oh like uh some old guy gonna look at my stuff and think it's like funny or it's bullshit or whatever. But like the young cats too, bro, they need to know like, like um, I got a little cousins. And before I was doing this, like no one, they didn't, no one, uh, I don't know if you know, but like, you know, immigrant families, once you come over to the country, you can't be nothing but doctor. I know, something, right. Something da, 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 nothing to really chase what you was going for. After I started really going hard on my stuff, some of my cousins like come out, they want to do dance. They want to dance now. Some of my cousin, cousins come out, they want to act now. They start really, and and the, the the step between taking it from a dream to like, you know, a goal is they start treating it like a job. They start practicing like I do at home. Like, cause they'll see me and be like, what are you doing? And they always used to make fun of me, but now I'm getting to it. They start practicing on whatever they like to do now. Cause it's like, you know, so I think it's very important for me to be a, uh, I'm a very uh, uh, straightforward person, and I feel like that needs to be uh, conveyed in my music. So yeah, I agree. With well, that. That's fine. Well, Lou, yeah, listen. Fine. I mean, obviously, not only are you obviously a beacon of light to your fans who look up to you, but obviously also your family. And you walk, you walk the walk, and you understand. You know, having dealt with you know so much already in your young life, how precious life is. And the fact of the matter is you know in your gut, in your heart, that you were born with a gift that needs to be given away. And the fact that you have, you're inspiring not only your fans, but your family um, is, is incredible. And you should feel good about that. I would, I would say to that, just like uh, for anybody watching, bro, I was really bad. I did not have a gift. It was not like, um, like uh, I mean, obviously you think you're good, but like it wasn't like I was significantly talented at music than anybody else in my school because that wasn't true it was just a straight up fact that one there was just two factors i had an obsession with it if you have an obsession to something do that thing for the rest of your life because it's really like you're never going to get tired of it if that's your obsession and two i didn't think i was good i think i could 
I looked at the rappers of my generation and I was a, you know, a rap fan. And I was like, and there was people my age, like 17, when I was 17, my age, making millions off of songs that don't mean anything. I don't da da da. It was just the, the full faith that I knew I could do it. It wasn't the fact I was good. I just knew I could do it. And I was obsessed with it. So I, I wouldn't say I was uh, talented at all. Because uh, um, uh, there's a lot more people. No, more I hear you. But also what you do that most people don't, even with a glimmer of talent, which you at the very least have and have, <laughs> is the fact that you understood the craft it took and the work it yeah. took. That, you know, so many kids in whatever industry, but especially the music one, we, yeah, we see them make millions and famous, 16, 17, 18. But Lou, you know this, you're in this for the long haul. And you know that yeah. to be in for the long haul, you gotta you gotta have a good foundation of craft. And and uh, it's a really inspiring thing. And, um, you know, listen, I could talk to you forever, my friend, but yeah, um, sure. I'm grateful uh, to have had the time to speak with you today. And I look forward to speaking yeah, with you soon. Which was, so it was a good conversation. I respect uh, you um, having me out here. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.